is video number 37 in our series, uh, Analytical Mechanics. In the previous videos, we have been discussing the motion of a billiard ball when the billiard ball is hit either along the center line or on the top half. And we went over that in quite a bit of detail. I think that was in videos 32 through 36. One reminder, the playlist for all the videos is at the website, digital-university.org. Now, what we're going to do in this video, and in the next several videos, is consider um, the motion, it could be of a billiard ball, or a bowling ball for that matter, the uh, physics would be exactly the same, where it has a backspin to it. So it has a velocity going in this direction, This is positive and this would be negative, but it has an angular velocity in the opposite sense. We want to analyze the motion of this in several different scenarios now. So let's say that, let's say it's a bowling ball. Again, the physics is exactly the same. And when we release the bowling ball, it has a backspin to it, but we do it in such a way that the forward linear velocity is greater than our omega naught. And this will then give us eventually pure roll. And later we'll show why that gives pure roll. And also we'll determine what will be the velocity of the bowling ball when it enters pure roll. Now, when we initially, when we let it go, it's sliding across the surface, so of course there's a frictional force in the opposite direction, pointing in the negative direction, and that frictional force has a minus sign, just pointing in the negative direction. It's equal to the coefficient of friction times gravitational acceleration, uh, 9.8 meters per second squared, times the mass of the bowling ball. So if it's released, with a backward spin, but V naught is still greater than R omega naught, using kinematics, we're going to show that it eventually goes into pure roll in the forward direction, and also by using kinematics, we're going to determine what will be the velocity of the bowling ball when it goes into pure roll. And everything that we say here would be applicable if it was a billiard ball, or bowling ball. The physics is, of course, identical. It's the same. So let's see how this works out. So we have the ball positioned here. A forward linear velocity and an angular velocity in this direction. frictional force in a negative direction. And once we release the ball and it's sliding across the surface, then the only force that's acting in that direction is friction. As we know in general, F equals mass times acceleration. Here the only force is frictional force, F. And F divided by M will be the acceleration. Divide this by M, that's minus mu G. So the acceleration on the ball is minus mu G. It's going to slow down because of friction. And we know in general, velocity equals V naught plus acceleration multiplied by time, only for our particular situation, the acceleration is this, minus mu g. So we have minus mu g times t. So this would be a general expression for the linear velocity of the bowling ball at any time t. What about for its 
angular velocity. And of course, it's the same type of general equation. The angular velocity equals omega naught plus the angular acceleration multiplied by time. For our problem, omega naught though is going in a negative direction. So we would have a minus sign here. Now we determine um, the linear acceleration easily enough. What about the angular acceleration? And of course we use the same approach as what you saw us do in our previous videos. We take the torque about the center of mass. Remember now, for any torque, the expression is in general some position vector taking the cross product of it with the force. Well here, here's the center of mass. The force is the frictional force, so the position vector is just the radius of the ball, and the force is just the frictional force F, so our position vector is the radius of the ball R, and this is the frictional force. And these are perpendicular, so the cross product, the magnitude of it is just R times F. So let's just write it like that. It's R, F. But now, is this a positive torque or a negative torque? So let's determine the, uh, the direction of the torque. So R points down. The frictional force F points to the left. But now remember when we're taking uh, cross products, we line the vectors up like this. And then when we go ahead and wrap our fingers or curl our fingers around, the thumb is pointing downward into the plane. So the torque is pointing inward. Our fingers wrap around in this direction. And that's a positive direction. It is the counterclockwise, it's the negative direction. So the torque is positive. Even though the frictional force is pointing in a negative direction, the torque itself is positive. And remember that torque also equals the moment of inertia above the center of mass times the angular acceleration. Even though F is negative, this is a positive quantity divided by this, that will give us the angular acceleration, and that too then will be positive. So this will equal R mu m g, that's the frictional force, everything is positive, divided by, let's get this in better focus, R times F, F, there's R, everything is positive, it's a positive torque, divided by the moment of inertia. And for a sphere, that's two-fifths R squared M. So we have cancellations here, and this comes out to be equal to five halves mu g divided by r. So alpha we can replace with this. So let's do that, multiplied by time of course. Mu g divided by r times t. So here then is a general equation for the angular velocity at any time. Now let's get rid of this so we can have some more space. Now we know from video 30 and from our previous work in the uh, billiard ball problem that when, if it goes into pure roll, at that time when pure roll is obtained, the linear velocity has to equal r 
times the angular velocity. And again, that was determined back in um, video number 30. So at a certain time, t prime, this, which is v, will equal this times r. So at t prime, that's the time when the ball goes, is supposed to go into pure roll. So we'll have v naught minus mu g t prime will equal omega, that's this, times r. So the minus omega naught plus mu g over r times t prime are. Now what would this give us? These r's will cancel here, so we'll have mu g t prime up times 5 halves. So we'll have it like this, and now, oops, this does not belong here. This belongs next to this term here. So let's put it in its proper place. Five halves. There. And these R's will cancel. So we'll have five halves mu g t prime. Here we have a mu g t prime. And this was minus omega naught. That was going in the backward direction. So let's take these two R's cancel. We still have R times this term. So we'll have V naught plus R omega naught minus this will equal, now these two R's cancel, and we have 5 halves mu g t prime. And let's take this term over here. gone from here. Add these together and we have 7 halves mu g t prime. So this equals 7 halves mu g t prime. We'll get rid of this. Now we get an expression for t prime. That is the time then when V equals R naught when it goes into pure roll. So we have T prime equals 2 over 7 mu G times V naught plus omega naught R. So this is the time when the ball goes into pure roll. If you know the coefficient of friction, the initial velocity, and the initial angle of the velocity, then we can determine the time at which the ball goes into pure roll. What will be its velocity then? Well, here's the equation for velocity. For time, that's t prime, which is this. So let's plug that in. We have v equals v naught minus mu g times t, or now we're at t prime, this the time when it goes into pure roll, which is this, 2 over 7 mu g times v naught plus omega naught. mu g's here cancel, and here we have v naught minus two sevenths v naught. Now this we can call our final velocity. This is the fi this is the velocity when it goes into pure roll. We'll call that vf. That will equal v naught minus two sevenths v naught. That is five sevenths v 
v naught minus two sevenths times this term. So this equation would give us then the velocity at the time when the ball goes into pure roll so that this stipulation here is satisfied. Now, remember at the beginning of the video, we had the initial condition. Yes, it has backward spin, but V naught was greater than R omega naught, so that this term is always going to be greater than this term, so that the sign of its final velocity will be the same as its initial velocity going in this direction. So we're guaranteed that when the ball goes into pure roll, it indeed is rolling along in the forward positive direction. And if we know its initial velocity and its initial angular velocity, then we can determine what its final velocity will be at the time when it goes into uh, pure roll. And again, the whole thing was stipulated upon, yes, it has a backward spin, but this, this inequality was, was like this. Though under those conditions, you're guaranteed it will go into pure roll with this as the final velocity when it enters pure roll. Okay, um, that's it for this video. Uh, this is how we approach it using kinematics. Let's, in the next video, we consider the same problem. Say we're using a bowling ball, a forward linear velocity, a backward angular velocity, but V naught is still greater than R omega naught. Now let's see what kind of information can we um, obtain about the system, not by using kinematics, but by using conservation of angular momentum. Uh, let's do that in the next video, and from that approach, let's see what kind of information we can get.